When I knew I was going to become an engineering manager, the first question I asked myself was, how can I be a really good engineering manager? Obviously. And after three months of being an engineering manager, I'm going to basically speak to my past self, which is not possible. So I'm going to speak to you and reflect on how you can be a good engineering manager. Okay, so hi, I'm Alexa and I'm a computer science student at Georgia Tech. One of the organizations I'm in at Georgia Tech is called Bits of Good and we create full-fledged web apps for nonprofits in the Atlanta area. The way it works is we have a bunch of project teams and our teams will have five to six developers, two designers, one product manager, and one engineering manager. Engineering managers are a very critical and important role to this organization. They're essentially responsible for the creation of the whole web app. There are lots of technical and managerial skills that an engineering manager needs. I was responsible for architecting the solution, choosing the tech stack we were going to use, creating tasks and issues for developers on GitHub, reviewing PRs, merging in that code, and also obviously coordinating with designers and product managers. So the first thing I was concerned about is choosing the technology. In some cases, this is not as relevant because you maybe jump onto a project and you're not creating one from scratch and you already have a set of technologies that you're using. But in my case, I got to choose every piece of technology in my stack, full control of it mostly. The thing that I got really caught up on was choosing the perfect stack, which is kind of impossible to do. There's always going to be something wrong with the tech stack you choose. Something's going to be difficult to implement using that language. Something's going to be really annoying in that library that you didn't plan ahead for. These are just things that are going to happen and there's trade-offs between all these different technologies. You have to look at those trade-offs and see what you want to prioritize. One thing I would say is that this gets easier with experience. Now that I've been an engineering manager for three months, I know which technologies we want to use in the future, which ones didn't work, which ones did work. So it's all a learning process. I would say one piece of concrete advice is don't use technologies that have not yet been proven to work in production. Another key takeaway is communication and action. So a lot of people say actions speak more than words. I partly agree with this. I don't think you're going to be successful if you only say what you're going to do and don't do it. And you're also not going to be successful if you do a bunch of things, but you don't tell anyone you're doing it. So you have to do both build trust with words and actions. For example, if you tell the team that you're going to review their PRs by Sunday, review their PRs by Sunday. Very simple. Obviously, if things come up, make sure to let your team know ahead of time. Try not to inconvenience them. It's just basic respect, basic leadership, build trust. Another take I have is technical proficiency as a engineering manager. I think this is especially important because I've kind of seen in bigger companies that as you go up, the idea is that you lose the technical aspect and are focused more on the business managerial aspect. And I think there's advantages and disadvantages to that, but I'm just going to say my take for now. You want to make sure you're able to answer technical questions that are asked to you or at least point people in the right direction to resources they can use. I would say a good engineering manager is able to actually contribute to their project. I'm not saying they should or have to, but I think if they are able to, that shows that you're technically proficient. You should be able to help with hot fixes, debugging and stuff like that. Obviously, don't take on the brunt of this work. This is for your developers to do. But I believe if you're technically able as a manager, it builds a lot of trust. Don't get me wrong. I highly respect product managers. There's a lot of things that they do that I'm not as good at. But you kind of get into this situation where the product manager is telling you to do these tasks, do these features, without most of the time knowing how to implement that themselves, if it's possible to implement it. 
So it kind of builds like this distrust between the people actually coding and, you know, the management. The engineering manager role is supposed to sort of combat that because you're the one talking to the product manager. You're going to hear what they have to say and make sure you're able to actually implement it. Lastly, learn to prioritize. Now, there are degrees in which you can prioritize and how and what you should be prioritizing. And that depends on the type of environment you're in and the context of your project. So in my context, we're students. We don't get paid for this. This is not a full-time job. We have other classes to study for, exams to take. And we don't necessarily have the time to build the bestest products ever. Not saying our products are bad, it's just we have to build fast and break things. I'm going to label this as like startup mentality. So in this case, as an engineering manager, you want to make sure you prioritize features over other things. Obviously, you don't want to throw those other things away, like reliability, how pixel perfect your images are, the maintainability of the code and the efficiency of the code, optimizations. You don't want to throw those away entirely because there's a balance, but you do want to prioritize the features and delivering to the customer more if you're in that startup mentality. If you're working for an established company, you might want to prioritize reliability over, you know, shipping new features every week. So those are just some things to consider. Um, figure out what context you're in, and then you'll be able to figure out what you should be prioritizing. So definitely take that into account. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you found this advice useful. If you're going to be an engineering manager and you're kind of worried, don't worry. If I can do it, you can do it. And I'll see you in the next one.